This is the eHealth Radio Network, your source for health advice on demand. And now your host, Eric Michaels. Thanks for joining us once again here on the Health Radio Network. This is your host, Eric Michaels. Today on the program, we're speaking with Susie Hewson, founder and developer of Natra Care, the world's first brand of organic and natural period products. And Susie, thanks for joining us here today on the Health Radio. You're welcome. So Susie, to kick things off here today, what makes Natra Care different from other menstrual care brands on the market? Let's start there. It's a great place to start because it started right back in 1989 where um, I had issues with what was what was available to me as a, as a woman and a, and a young mum, seeing what was on the market. And I, I used to live in Sweden. I knew about environmental issues. I'd seen what happens uh, near processing for pulp, etc. And so um, I looked around and there was nothing at all other than the conventional brands. So it started as, I started as a campaign, but that sort of led up to developing the category. There was there were no organic cotton tampons, there were no plastic free pads. I mean I mean I sat on my own, I guess, in the category, creating that category. Um, so that others could come in and and work in that category. So what made it what makes us different is that we started from zero. Um, we went from zero to hero, um, and because we are different, the reasons why we're different is that one, the design was based on the concept of design for change. I'm, I, you know, it was an environmental health campaign for me. I didn't set out to create a business. I didn't set out, even, I didn't even set out to create a product. I just found that the problems that I found in looking at the, what is happening in the market and what's happening with products, I needed to create a product to do two things. One is to give an option, an alternative to women, and also to challenge what was out there to show that what what could be done can be done and you can deliver a perfect product. So Nature Care across products, so in our tampons, we're a 100% certified organic cotton. We're certified to the global organic textile standard and and, uh, shortened to GOTS. This is a standard that is recognized by the U.S. Department of Agriculture as a as a processing standard for organic products. Um, we don't use any plastic. The applicators we use are cardboard and, and all of the materials that we use that are derived from pulp are from FSC and um, PFC. Um, let me best not to use acron- acronyms. I'm sorry. Environmentally managed forestry, softwoods um, that are environmentally managed. So. Looking at all of our resources, um, they had to conform and be certified to accredited environmental systems. The raw materials needed to be processed to only totally chlorine free systems. Um, our cotton has to be certified organic and uh, um, on, on organic standards, which are agricultural standards, which also for North America um, is the National Organic Program also. So that all those all those issues that make make us different from the beginning um, have sustained us where we are today, and and st- still we stand out as being different in that we are the only product, the only menstrual products to be certified um, compostable to industrial standards, which is to the EN 13432 and the ASTM 6400. I think that's what it is. So from cradle to cradle to cradle, we, we're, we're taking care of the environment in our resourcing of, of raw materials. We're processing where we're using green energy. All of our systems, um, I would say 80% of our processing is done with green renewable energy. And at the end of life, we can guarantee and uh, that we are accredited and certified as compostable to industrial standards. So it goes back to producing good compost. There is nothing in there that's going to linger in the environment and pollute and cause issues down the road. And, and that's a whole section of why we do what we do, being um, plastic free, avoiding the use of uh, petro- petroleum derived um, oils and plastics so it's 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 a new development in the in the sort of bio sector um but my first my first use of um compostable biofilm was back in 1996 was one of the first films to be produced um and one of the negative sides of it uh, it was very good environmentally but one of the negative sides of it was that when you 
you you rustled when you walked. It was a bit like having cellophane in your in your pad because it was quite noisy. So there's been a lot of evolution um, through the 2000s. So um, I can say that you will not rustle wearing our pads today. Well, that is a huge bonus on a humorous note. But to be serious, that is some great information. Thanks for the thorough coverage in your response. Uh, uh, to get things underway here today. Now, why is plastic and menstrual care a problem? Ooh, well, well, if you think that there are, you know, global sales to be, are estimated just for tampons um, to be by 2024, 18 billion, 18 billion units, that is. So it, 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 plastic is a problem in, I mean, I'm sure we've seen all the sort of scare news about plastics in the oceans, um, breaking down, you know, when plastics, plastics are a fantastic, plastic is a fantastic product. When it was designed, I, I think that, um, you know, there was a cause, there was a need, um, but there was no knowledge, there was no, there was no research uh, that showed what happened to plastic after after long periods of time. I think they thought it was completely inert, should it be in the environment, it would never break down, nothing would happen. But but um, five gyres, et cetera, have shown Greenpeace, et cetera, have shown from their research that plastics do break down under under the influence of uh, of, of air, uh, being in seawater and um, from sunlight. So we know we know that recent times that uh, plastics are breaking down in the environment where they're finding their way into the marine environment. Plastic from from oil based materials will not biodegrade. And and I know that people can get really bogged down with the difference between biodegrade and degrade. Um, you and I, when we die, will biodegrade. We will be feeding the insects and pushing up those trees. We will be just compost. Degrade means that it just breaks down into tiny, tiny pieces. So plastic breaks down into micro pieces. It will never disappear. And the definition of a plastic is that it remains unchanged in the environment. It, you, can, it will detect, you can detect it in the environment, even at nano size. So the real problem here in our category is, is, is several folds. One on from the environmental aspect, um, research that was done by US based Plastic Oceans, they reported on their beach cleans finding 4.8 pieces of menstrual waste for every 100 meters. And I'm sorry, I have to convert there. 100 meters, what's that? Um, <laughs> uh, it's a lot. Um, I can't go back to Imperial, sorry. Um, every 100 meters of beach clean, that's a lot of plastic waste. Uh, and if you think that we talk about how many, how many, you know, how many is expected to be sold, that's that's a huge amount around the world. That's just on the beaches cleaned. So there's an environmental, um, it's environmental litter, number one. And people, call, I know that you find the plastic applicators on on the beach side or or bits of products. And I've seen, I've been to waste management places where I've seen, uh, excuse this, but when the spirals that turn the churn the waste to try and break it down before it gets separated out, I've seen actual products on those spirals that I could tell you the brand name of them. They are completely unchanged, and they get they can end up out in the in the rivers and in the water as you know when when sewage works get flooded. Uh, when there's high rains, you know, there stuff can get out into the ocean and it does get out into the ocean. So there's the problem of litter. On on the on the health aspect of it, and, and litter is a health aspect because what is in the ocean is in our water, is in the food chain. We, we're even now breathing in micro particles of plastics from polyester clothes and, you know, washing. As, it, it's out there. It's in, it's getting into us. But recently, in 2021, the end of 2021, um, there was um, the first investigation into the potential generation of nanoplastics inside the human body. And this was done at um, a university here in the UK, the Middlesex Middlesex University. It's a, the Royal Society of Chemistry is the Department of Natural Sciences and Faculty of Science and Technology. And they, uh, this was published, uh, I think it was December 2021. Um, but they set out to investigate the health and environmental impact of tampons because of recent con concerns about pollution and damage to marine life and plastic in tampons specifically. Um, and after disposal um, and, asso and the association with negative health effects such as bacteria growth and etc., like they decided they needed to take a look. So they tested 24 tampons that are, they found, they, they sort of source them all around the world. And these are like, you know, 
major products that come off the shelf. Um, and of, of the 24 tampons that they brands that they tested, they found synthetic plastics in half of them, in 12 tampon, tampons. And they also found evidence for the release of plastic microfibers in seven of those 12 tampons. And they estimated a maximum, I'm going to go big numbers now, um, we're talking about star systems here, I think. They estimated a maximum of 17 billion nanoplastic fibers are released for each of those tampons with an average of 9.4 billion tampons. That, that's a staggering 86 trillion fibers across a lifetime of use of tampons. That is absolutely mind boggling when you think about it like that in those numbers and in the global impact especially if all were plastic products. That is a big problem. Tell me, what is the solution here? We can solve this issue because we, we, have, we have used uh, home compost certified plastics that are derived from plants and starches. There's a lot of development into this. You can make, you can make compostable plastics out of seaweed that look and act like natural plastics. Hard plastics are much harder because when you derive from plastics, the end product ends up just being polyethylene. It's the same ingredient. So you have to be very careful in distinguishing between rigid plastics and, and uh, films that we use in our pads. So there is a solution. There's new technology. There's research coming out of universities looking at alternatives to oil and oil as we know is a big problem in for all reasons and, and you know the ultimate is going to run out so we still need to look for alternatives the alternatives look for products that use home compost certified biofilms and are EN14342 certified because they are the only ones that are going to have a negative impact on the environment so there are solutions we just need to search them out, look for them, and then the, the you know, regulations for uh, um, ingredient ex, um, disclosure helps that because if you look at the pack and you can see that what the ingredients are and there's truthful disclosure, then you can make consumer choice and consumers are the arbiters of change. Every dollar you hand over, you are making a difference if you're choosing the right product. And I would say NatureCare is one of those better choices. Looking at the angle of sustainability, what are other simple ways to be more sustainable here? Wow, there's a lot there. <laughs> In a minute, that's difficult. But for your health, um, the, the obvious things that, you know, we, we, we change from being hunter-gatherers to being sort of super, super, super tech over a very short period of time. And those things that helped in sustainability are eating local and eating when in season. You know, you eat whole grains, buy sustainably sourced seafood, organic foods. Organic agriculture and sustainable um, marine uh, fisheries do help control and, and protect the environment. So there are really key things in making sure that you're not damaging the environment and the things you're taking out. Um, you, you know, water security. Water security is so important. Don't flush stuff down the toilet that shouldn't go down the toilet. Don't pour oil into the drains. Don't dispose of chemicals, you know, into the system that's going to get into our water. And by choice, choose green products, choose green cleaning products, green cosmetics, because otherwise you could be wiping onto your face more than you're wiping off. So that is a really key thing is to what you buy is going to end up going somewhere. Don't choose things that are packed in massive amount of packaging, plastics. Go to the market where buy things, you know, and put them in your shopping bag. There's so many simple things that we did that our grandparents did that they would look on in horror today. But and then also one other thing I would say that's close to my heart is really be conscious of buying products that endanger wildlife. We, we really need to make sure that we keep a balance in the environment, because if we put our environment out of balance, that means our habitat becomes out of balance. A lot of great information there, and I know personally you could go on and on here about this. There is so much to cover, but you did a fantastic job within the time limits here today. Again, Susie, we really appreciate what you do and for your time spent with us here today. Uh, how can listeners learn more about NatureCare's mission and products? Well, you just go straight to our website. I mean, I started before the web, before the internet even existed. Um, so naturecare.com, www.natracare.com. And we have a lot of information on their blogs, info links to campaigning organizations that we work with, some great organization, Women's Voices for the Earth. Um, 
it's all there for you. Please visit. We'd love to see you there. Again, listeners, it is natracare.com. This link will be included within the show notes of this broadcast. Susie, all the best. Thanks so much for joining us here today on Health Radio. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And it certainly was my pleasure. We've been speaking with Susie Hewson, founder and developer of NatraCare, the world's first brand of organic and natural period products. And again, for all the details, visit NatraCare.com. And again, this has been your host, Eric Michaels, and we do thank you for your continued support of the E-Health Radio Network. Join us again soon for another episode that will help further expand your knowledge on those things that are important to your health and wellness. For more E-Health Radio reports, we invite you to visit our main radio channel site, at ehealthradionetwork.com. And as always, we do thank you for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to the eHealth Radio Network. For more information or to subscribe to this podcast, visit ehealthradionetwork.com.